Welcome to our lesson on reproductive strategies on vertebrates. Now, I want us to begin our lesson today by defining what fertilization is. Fertilization. And fertilization is essentially the fusion of an egg cell and a stem cell to give us a zygote. And there are two types of fertilization. There is what's called internal fertilization and external fertilization. Now, um, internal fertilization takes place inside the female reproductive organs, inside the female reproductive organs. An external fertilization takes place outside the female reproductive organs. Right. Now, from the picture below, you can obviously see that fertilization takes place inside. Fertilization takes place inside the female body, inside the female body. We also notice that there must be contact between the male and female And there must be a match be a match of reproductive organs. Right. And from the picture here, we can see that no contact. is required between the male and female. Right. A very important distinction that we must note is that water is always required. And water serves important functions. The first function of water is that it prevents the eggs from drying out. Prevents eggs from drying. It also allows the sperm to swim. We've been speaking about these cells, the sperm cell and the egg cell. So the sperm cell is a structure that looks a bit like this. And it's divided into three main parts. One, two, and three. We have the tail, we have the body, and we have the head. Inside the head are two important things. Number one, we have the nucleus, and the nucleus contains the genetic material of the father, contains the genetic material of the father. And we also have a structure at the front of the head called the acrosome, called the acrosome. And the function of the acrosome is that it allows the nucleus 
in the sperm to enter the egg cell. It does this by dissolving the layer surrounding the egg cell. And then we move on to the body. In the body there was a structure called the mitochondria. And the basic function of the mitochondria is that it allows the sperm. Oh, sorry about that. If it doesn't allow, it gives the sperm energy to swim. Gives. Uh, my writing is a bit illegible there. It gives sperm. The energy, sorry about that, the energy to swim. And lastly, the tail. The tail does what's called flagellation, which is basically an up and down movement that allows the sperm to move forward. The, the tail propels the sperm cell forward. Then move on to the Excel. The Excel is a much more simple structure. Inside the Excel, we have again a nucleus. This is the nucleus from the mother. But we also have a layer that surrounds the the Excel. Jelly-like layer. And this jelly-like layer that surrounds the egg cell is what's called the zona. Um, probably much better to write it this side. It's what's called the zona pellucida. This is the very same layer that is dissolved by the acrosome. No. No. A very important thing, an egg cell is not to be confused with another structure called the amniotic egg. The amniotic egg is basically an egg with a shell. and four very important membranes. Now, the first membrane that we find in the amniotic egg is what we call the chorion. The chorion allows for gaseous exchange, which in essence simply means it allows oxygen to enter and carbon dioxide to leave. The second membrane that we have is what we call the yolk sac. The yolk sac provides nutrients. The yolk sac provides nutrients to the growing embryo within the egg. Next we have the allantoid. And Alantoy simply stores the Alantoy stores waste products of the embryo. The last layer that we have <coughs> is the amnion. Amnion has a series of functions. Number one prevents desiccation, that is to say, it stops the embryo from drying out. Number two, it protects against mechanical shock. Protects. It protects against mechanical shock. Just gonna write that as. MS right there. 
Now here you'll notice all the membranes that we've spoken about. We have um, we have the lantern, which again stores the waste product. The chorion allows oxygen to and turn carbon dioxide to leave. The amnion, which prevents the embryo from being dry and it protects against mechanical shock. And lastly, you will see the yolk sac, which is this big yellow thing here, which basically provides nutrients for the growing end. Good. Now, I want us to move on to the reproductive strategies now. And here we have three. The first one we have is called ovoviviparity. This is followed by viviparity. And then lastly, no repair. Now, the table in the next page will show us the differences between the three. Um, but before we do that, you might be asking yourself, what are these strategies that we have here? What exactly are they? So these refer to the way in which an embryo develops. Now, on the next page, we will see the differences between the three reproductive strategies. Now, this table highlights the differences between the three reproductive strategies that we spoke about on the last page, these here. Now, what I want you to do is to pause the video, go through them, and if you have any questions, write them down and leave them in the comment section, and we will answer them in the next video.